we're kind of in the market, so I'm not really saying that we're hedged, but we're, we're quite optimistic. And despite um, even even an exit vote comes in later, we, we do anticipate there might be a little bit of a sell-off. Uh, but we think that it'd still be a window to be able to get into a market that right now is a little pricey. So uh, hopefully there could be a, a window of avenue for a better entry. Well, on my side, um, I actually got out of the trade last Tuesday, and I told all my members to get out also because of the volatility. Even if you think that there's, it's going one way and you trade one way or the other, you get stopped out all the way. No wonder we're seeing such thin volume. <laughs> ah, well, Everybody's yeah. gotten out. That's well, right. You know, let's talk about the broader economy here. I mean, mm -hmm. you're, you're, all, you're all taxpayers. You're also looking at the economy in general. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a two-year transition period if, for example, an exit happens. What do you think is going to happen? Are the markets just going to align because at the end of the day, the trade figures will be robust? You're going to trade one way or the other? Is, it, is, it, is this going to calm down the next few months even with an exit? I would believe so. I'm, I'm sure in the beginning it would be quite chaotic as, uh, as they're not factoring in. The pricing in that we saw in the last few days is on a remain. So if we do get an exit, you'll probably have the initial sell-off. But like, you're right, it takes two years to negotiate yourself out of the EU. And I'm sure they're going to try to be able to negotiate things just like Switzerland and, uh, had done to be able to put in some sort of uh, measures to improve their policies. Well, for me, it's, it's going to go back to normal. Um, it's a matter of when, it, but it will. Um, first of all, in the forex market, it's always backed by the central banks. And so if there's such a disruption, if ever Brexit does occur, it will be backstopped by all central banks. And just case in point, when Japan got hit by those massive earthquakes and tsunamis and everything, everybody stepped in and then, you know, uh, saved the, the yen from, you know, strengthening too much. So this will be of course something bigger and more man-made but in the end it's really going to stabilize fascinating you know, that you think it's going to be bigger well you know, it's also interesting to see when you're both both your comments talking about markets aligning even when the regulation does settle and, and then you do see an autonomous britain especially when in terms of regulation so so uh, any other outlook you have in terms of emerging markets because some analysts are talking about its impact on emerging markets especially those with high current account deficits uh, although the philippines isn't exactly in that yes. in that basket mm -hmm. Well, um, I think that obviously the, the, the Asian markets that are without will probably have much more uh, ability to, to stay stable as compared to the rest, and uh, the rest will be really very glued to what happens. Uh, in terms of moving forward, though, I think um, an exit, uh, although it might not impact anything after two years, will send a wrong message to the, to the EU zone, right? And I guess that's the, what the bigger fear is like. Mm -hmm. Because if that were to detach one or two more members, and you create a trend out of that, and I think that's where the bigger implications will lie.